Today I'm going to take you on a tour of Super Game Shack, a game shop that I've wanted to visit since it opened in December 2020. This shop means a lot to me because back when Rich, who owns this shop, used to go around the various different gaming events, he used to trade under the name Game Boy Shack, and it was by far my favourite store at those shows. So to find out that he'd taken that concept of a store and turned it into an entire shop, I could not have been more excited, and I finally had the chance to go last weekend. So let's take a look at the shop and see what they have to offer. Right, I hope you're sitting comfortably because we're going to go through literally everything there is to see in the shop. So starting off at the shelves at the back here, we can see already an incredible selection of games. Conker's Bad Fur Day there, right in the middle, 300 quid, complete in box. Not a bad price, there's also Diddy Kong Racing there for 45, one of my favourite racing games of all time. Now on the next shelf down, we've got another set of really great games here. Ridge Racer 64 there, Banjo-Kazooie. Bomberman, both Bomberman games for the N64, and really reasonably priced loose games there as well. Mario 64 there for only 25 quid, that's really good. On this shelf here we have Castlevania 64, a very underrated game. I, I really personally enjoy that one. There's also a few games there on the side that are interesting, like Magical Tetris Challenge, Book Bumble, of course, the game with the incredible opening music, and San Francisco Rush, another one of my favourite racing games. Now on the next one down here, we've got another set of great games. We have Wipeout 64, a game that I always felt was more suited on the PlayStation, but the N64 game is pretty good as well. And of course, underneath that, there's Carmageddon 64, which is notoriously a very bad game, but I do kind of enjoy it at the same time. And now coming out of the shelves a little bit to show you what's on offer just next to them. So there's this wall here of PS2 games. And I also love the fact that this shelf here was actually repurposed from an original shelf in Blockbuster Entertainment. So it's so cool seeing that out in the wild. I also love the fact that they wrapped up each game individually in plastic wrapping to keep everything nice and fresh too. And now we're looking at the second shelf here, and this one is full of amazing SNES games. As you can see, there's some really good games here. I've just spotted Mega Man X2 up there for 380. Honestly, that isn't a bad price. Also, Skyblazer there, one of Sony's first games, actually. That is a really interesting one to see. On this one here, we have Mario is Missing. That's quite a rare game, actually, considering it's a Mario title. We also have Super Alest, one of my favourite shoot 'em ups of all time, and Sparkster right there at the bottom, one of my favourite platformers of all time too. So you can see already that these shelves are just jam-packed with absolute gems of games. Both Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3 there, complete in box. 75 for number 2 and 70 for number 3. I think that's quite reasonable. And then on the next one down here, let's have a look what we've got in here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, of course, that one will be very sought after at the minute, considering that the new TMNT game just came out. We also have a rare classic, Killer Instinct. I wonder whether they actually had the CD for that one or not, I'm not sure about that. And there, another one of these blockbuster shelves, this time showing off the original Xbox. There's so many great games on the original Xbox, it's a series that I've not really dived into that much in the past, but I would be interested to check it out at some point. And now this one here, that top shelf there was full of Pokemon games. We also have a really nice range of different Game Boy systems here. Some of them were modded, in fact I think nearly all of them were, so they all have really nice new backlit screens. There's a nice Tribal SP complete in box there. Very sought after Pokemon Heart Gold with the Pokewalker in the corner there, as well as some Japanese Pokemon games too. So there was a really great selection if you're a Pokemon fan. And then down here on this bottom shelf, we've got a load of PSP consoles. 3DS's, DSi, basically everything you could wish for really. And now this shelf here full of Xbox 360 games. My personal favourite Xbox 360 game right there in the middle, Eternal Sonata. One of the best RPGs of all time and it definitely has one of the best soundtracks of all time too. Now on this next shelf, another really great, really exciting shelf. This one is jam-packed with Mega Drive classics. 
We have Castlevania right there in the middle for 220. I was really lucky and I actually picked it up cart only for about 30 quid many years ago, but I would love to have the box and instructions at some point. Now we have a really nice set of DS games over there in the corner, as well as some NES games on this side. There's Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. Of course, one of the least liked games in the series, but I personally don't quite enjoy it, especially the music. And now we're taking a look at a few of the loose 3DS and original DS games. I can see Castlevania Order of Ecclesia there, which is an incredible game. And for 55, that's not actually that bad because those Castlevania games are getting crazy expensive these days. Here's some more NES games here. Fester's Quest, of course, just like Castlevania 2, another very notoriously bad game for the system. They also had there the original Metal Gear for the NES as well, that would be really interesting to play. And now some Dreamcast games, a really great selection of Dreamcast games here. Giga Wing, one of my favourite games on the system, Power Stone 2, Resident Evil 2, Bangayo is an incredible game and for 45 quid, that is an incredible deal as well, that really is a steal. And now in this shelf, a lot more modern, we're looking at some Switch games. Nothing super exciting here, a lot of these are the more recent releases. There's also a stack of games at the back there. There's a nice Triangle Strategy Special Edition, which I was quite tempted to get actually. Unfortunately, the price label there is just a little bit out of focus, so I can't quite make out how much it was. Maybe a hundred? Can't quite see that. And there's some other good games here. I kind of regret not picking up Burnout Paradise there, because that is one of my favourite racing games ever. And I would really like to be able to play that on the Switch at some point as well. Now, thankfully, the camera decided to focus a bit more here, so here's some more Switch games. Disgaea 5 Complete at the top there. Crash Insane Trilogy, another game for the Switch that for some reason I don't have. I have it on the PlayStation, but I would really like to get it on the Switch. And now next to these shelves, they also had this really interesting wall here of little collectible figures that you can get as well. I've got one of those Zelda key rings, and they're really cool actually. And then on this next shelf down, there's some controller holders. I've actually got the Mega Man one on the back of my shelf right there. I don't think they had the Mega Man one here though, from what I could see. They also had some mugs there as well. And on this wall, there's loads of plushies, key rings, art prints. Basically, this shop is a lot more than just games. There's a load of really interesting merchandise here as well. And from the sounds of it, they do actually sell quite a lot of the merch as well as the games. So it's really good that they've got a nice mix of the two. And now back to the games, some really heavy hitting PS2 games here, including all three of the Atelier Iris games. Easily my favorite series on the PS2, especially Manakemia, which we'll see in this list right here, I think. There it is right there on the right there, Manakamia Alchemists of Al Revis Academy, my favourite game on the PS2 by a long shot. There's also some really interesting PS3 games here, including Dawn of the Dragon, the first Spyro game where you can actually fly free roam, and it's a really good game as well. There's also Shadow of the Colossus back there, and now on the next shelf down, some GameCube greats. There's a nice stack of games there, including the Wind Waker at the top, the GameCube version of Resi 2, the Zelda Collector's Edition, and a lot more as well. And now some Sega Saturn games. Nothing too exciting there on the Saturn. Let me know if you're watching this video, if you found anything really interesting there. They did have the Championship Edition of Daytona USA, which I don't have actually. Now moving on to the shelves at the back, we have a really great selection of PSP, PS4, Xbox One, GameCube, Mega Drive, and Ness in the corner there as well. So let's take a little look down these shelves now and see if anything catches our attention. There's some really great games there for the PSP. Space Invaders Extreme is a really cool game. Taito Legends and Wipeout Pulse and Pure there as well. Amazing games on the PSP. And now the next shelf down is some NES games. Unfortunately, I'm sorry that the camera was a little bit out of focus and that it's a little bit stuttery. I didn't realize that my camera has no stabilization whatsoever. So I've tried to correct it as best as I can in post, but I am looking to upgrade my camera in the future. So hopefully future tour videos like this will be a lot clearer and a lot easier to watch as well. But anyway, hopefully you're enjoying the video so far. Let's continue down the next shelf and take a look at some of the GameCube games here that are for sale. Not too exciting here on the GameCube front. Their Serious Sam is another really fun game. And of course, SSX Tricky as well. 
I think the camera's trying to focus on the GBA games at the front. I didn't really spend too long looking at them, so feel free to pause this video and have a look at anything we may have missed. I do want to have a quick look at these Mega Drive games here though, see if there was anything interesting. Again, sorry about the really stuttery camera, I did the best I could to try and fix this. You'll just have to bear with it for this section, it does clear up a bit later on. Marble Madness there on the Mega Drive, that's a really great port of the game. And now some modern games, some PS4, some Xbox One, and some 3DS there as well. Nothing too exciting there on the 3DS though, unfortunately, and there's a few more Mega Drive games there as well. Mega Bomberman, it's a really great Bomberman game. Sonic 3D of course, and Sonic 3 there as well. I also love the fact that every single game here is wrapped up individually too. There was also some Dreamcast games there. And now back at the top, some PS4 games, followed by some Master System games here, including what we've we got here, Columns, Desert Strike, Chuck Rock, Golden Axe, the original version there, really cool. There's also some loose DS games on the side there. Scribble Noughts for four quid is a really good price. Oh, I didn't notice they had the first Ace Attorney up there as well, I would have picked that one up. Wario Master Disguise as well, Sonic Rush, a few games that you don't see that often. And here's some more Dreamcast games, including what's here, Trick Style, Toy Racer, I actually picked that up recently, and there was also a few loose carts there as well. And then down the side here, in between those shelves and the cabinets, are some more Master System games. So let me know whether you see anything interesting here. Operation Wolf, that's a really good game. So is New Zealand Story right next to it. Cloud Master as well, that's a good one. And what do we have here? Ghostbusters. I actually think that the Master System version is the best version of that game. And Speedball, and I didn't see what was on the bottom one there. And now for something really exciting, here's some loose original Game Boy games. A really nice selection here. Let me know what you think sticks out. I see Kirby Star Stacker. That's quite a rare game for the system. They're selling it there for 45 Also Turrican there at the front too. And the original Mega Man. And Mercenary Force, just behind that, that's a really great game for the system. And just above there as well is Bubble and Ghost there on the right, that's another really great game. And there was also loads more Game Boy games here on this wall, in between the shelves at the back and the counter on the left. I can see some really great games already, Kirby Pinball, Game & Watch Gallery, the first one. There's also some Game Boy Color games here as well. Some Game Boy Color and some dual original GB and Game Boy Color games. And then here's another display cabinet. And the person who owns the shop was very kind and actually opened up all the cabinets for me so I could go in and get a really nice look without any glare. So enjoy this look at some PS1 games here. I can see the original Grandia there. That's an amazing game. Cooler World as well, of course, a classic. One that a lot of people played on one of the demo discs back in the day. And then some more PlayStation games of various generations. PS5, PS1, Final Doom there. And now on the next one down is some PlayStation Vita games. We're going to start by having a look at some of the unboxed games here. Super Monkey Ball Banana Splits, one of the best Monkey Ball games ever made and one that I don't think gets enough attention. Asphalt Injection as well, that's a game I want. I kind of regret not picking that one up now I've seen it there, actually. And a few other interesting games there. And now let's take a look at some of the games in box. We've got Project Diva F Second, which is probably my favourite out of all the Project Diva games. Ratchet & Clank Trilogy is really good on the Vita too. And now on the bottom shelf here we have some Neo Geo Pocket games. I actually picked up one of the games here, which you'll see a bit later on when I show off what I picked up from the store. And some Game Gear games as well. A system that I haven't really got into, but I would definitely like to, especially now that I've got the adapter for the analog pocket. They also had, in the middle of the shelf right here, loads of really nice pin badges too, so enjoy having a look at these here. And of course, next to that there was also some candy as well. And here's some more games, let's start by taking a look at some more PS1 titles here. Let me know whether you spot anything interesting in these ones. There's some Crash Bandicoot games there, Driver 2 of course, another classic for the system. Duke Nukem as well, they have a lot of different Duke Nukem games. I don't know whether that's all of them for the PS1, but it's definitely a really good selection. And all of the cool border games there as well, some really great snowboarding games for the system. And on the next one down we have the Die Hard trilogy there, Everybody's Golf, the first one. A very long running and successful franchise there. Music 2000, that was a game that I played a lot of on the PS1 back in the day, and Heart of Darkness as well. I wonder whether they had the 3D glasses with that version. And now just below them, here's some Wii games. Nothing too exciting here on the Wii, 
Uh, probably Donkey Kong Jet Race is the most interesting game out of that bunch there. And some more Wii games here. Wario Landshake Dimension, an incredible game. And some Wii U games next to him. Nothing exciting there on the Wii U. I mean, you can say that about the majority of the Wii U's library at this point, to be honest. And some more Wii games here. Sega Bass Fishing for the Wii. Spyro The Eternal Night. And some more PS1 games up here. We've got some Worms games on the left there. We've got V Rally, a really great arcade style rally game. Really enjoy that one. The original Wipeout there as well. Tempest X3, another really good game. And now here we've got some Tomb Raider games. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 and 3, which I would be really interested to play on the PS1 because I only ever actually played them on the GameCube. They also had San Francisco Rush there for the PS1 as well. I wonder how that one plays in comparison to how it plays on the N64 and the, and the Dreamcast and stuff like that. And now we have some PS3 games here. One of my favourite modern-ish consoles. Would you say PS3 is modern? I'd say it's kind of in that weird in-between zone. So have a look down here. Driver San Francisco, that is a fantastic game for the system. Of course, Eye of Judgment, one of the exclusives for the system there. And some of the Dirt games as well. They're really fun racing games, the Dirt games are. Especially 2 and 3, they are really fun. Little Big Planet, another really great exclusive there for the PS3, and Motorstorm as well. I really want to try the Motorstorm games again because I remember really enjoying them back in the day. Now, there's a load of Need for Speed games there. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit there on the PS3 is actually my favourite game in the entire series. And here's a look at the Bargain Corner, which is basically just a load of junk that they just threw here to try and get rid of. But let me know whether you spot anything interesting. I did have a quick look through here while I was having a look to buy some things in the shop after recording, but I didn't really see anything worth picking up. But let me know whether you spot anything interesting. And of course, there on the right, there's also a few more DS games loose for just a few quid each so it's really nice that they're they're actually selling some really cheap games as well so it's always good to see even if the games themselves aren't exactly anything to write home about and there's some more ps2 games here some very kind of shovelware ds games as well and now behind the counter they had loads of different trading cards loads of pokemon things magic the gathering um all sorts of different things there. There's some Dragon Ball cards, loads more magic cards, loads more Pokemon boxes. They said the cards actually sell really well, so they've actually started expanding their, their Pokemon card collection. And just to the left of that as well is this insane wall of controllers here. That is an insane amount of controllers for pretty much every system you could hope for. And now for my final favourite part of the shop. This is all of the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance boxed games. And as we're having a scroll through them here, just take a look at the incredible condition that all of these games are in and the incredible prices as well. They're actually really reasonable prices considering the condition and the fact that they're all complete in box with the manuals as well so let me know whether you spot any games that really stand out for you there's Castlevania Aria of Sorrow there for the GBA one of the best games on the entire system DK King of Swing for only 25 quid I'm really kicking myself for not picking that one up they also had the original Super Mario Advance there Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga Space Channel 5 a game that you don't see that often for the original Game Boy, so that's a really cool one to see. There's Kingdom Hearts at the bottom there. Bomberman Max, again, only 20 quid, really amazing prices. And then here we have Super Puzzle Fighter, some of the Mega Man games there on the bottom left, really excited to see those. And now on the final shelf here, some more GBA and original Game Boy games, Zelda Minish Cap, Oracle of Seasons, Yoshi's Island, just an incredible range of games right there. So that was what the shop looked like, but of course I couldn't help myself and I picked up a few games that I was very excited to find while I was looking around. The first one was in that cabinet with the Neo Geo games, and that is Crush Roller. And I did actually mention this game in my Neo Geo Pocket video I did a few weeks ago, so if you want to see what this game is like and why I was so excited to find it, go ahead and check out that video, there'll be a link in the description. And the other game, and a very expensive game, but one that I have never seen anywhere before out in the wild, so I was very excited to find this one. And it was expensive, but I do have a really good reason for wanting this game, and that game is Blender Bros. And of course, the game was complete in box. We have an immaculate condition cartridge right there. And the thing that I was even more excited to find inside, not just the manual, but it also includes all of the little posters that came with it as well. So there was this one all about the GBA, all about Nintendo Power. And the thing that I was most excited to find in there was this pristine condition poster that came with the game as well. 
I always love it when little games like this come with posters and this one looks really nice. So there we go. I'm going to try and keep it safe in the box. Maybe I'll actually put it up somewhere if I can if I can kind of find a way of protecting it without getting it damaged because just this piece of paper alone is worth quite a bit of money. And of course, there's the instruction manual as well. Immaculate condition, not a single scratch on it. So I'm so happy to find this. And the reason I'm so happy to find this, this game is one of the final games that Quintet is ever credited on. And they actually worked on the sound for this game. And of course, if you've been on my channel for a while, you'll know that I've been working very hard on this Quintet documentary retrospective style thing. And I actually want to try and track down every single game that they've ever worked on, even in a really small quantity like this game. So I was so excited to find it. It's been one that's been on my eBay list for a long time, but I've either never had the money or it always just felt like it was a little bit too expensive, but I thought I would treat myself while I was at the shop this weekend and finally get myself another game for the collection. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tour of Super Game Shack. Definitely go and check them out. I'll put a link in the description to their Instagram, to their website, and to the address on Google Maps as well, so it should be really easy to find. I really enjoyed making this shop tour and I'm hoping to do more all across the UK in the future, so subscribe if you want to see more incredible retro gaming shops like this one. I'll see you all very soon for the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>